Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Channel Legends video. Guys, for those who have just caught the latest episode of Call of the Arbiter, there were two new characters, two new heroes from that episode that are coming into the game. They should be live in the game right now. Um, so we're going to go through their kits, through their skills, see what they're like. And we also know they're going to be involved in some summoning events coming up. So I guess let's dive into it then. Um, at this moment in time, I have not seen the Call of the Arbiter episode, but no doubt I will follow up as soon as we know with the kind of Call of the Arbiter codes that pop up along the way as well. Let's get into this. The first one up, uh, I guess let's show you the visual of them first. So yeah, the first one up here is Lady of Irith, who is going to be a Sylvan Watcher legendary. She's actually going to be available on the on this weekend as a 10 times summon whilst we've got the two times chance on sacred. I think I got that right. Yeah, so we've got two times chance on sacreds coming up anyway. Most people will be pulling shards if they're involved in this fusion, if they've got some left. And she's going to be on a 10 times during that. So pretty damn uh, cool, actually. That's a, that's a nice thing to do if she's a good champion. We will see in a minute. Uh, what are you saying about the visual here? Looks pretty Robin Hood-esque. Generally got that kind of like support healer type vibe. I guess let's have a look at the other visual before we get into kits and stuff. This basically is Bad L before he turns into the kind of like proper dark Bad L. So he's, he's Valkanen, um, which is the original kind of Bad L before he gets corrupted or whatever goes on. As I say, not seen the episodes yet, but... And maybe we don't even get all of that info in terms of how he turns into like the proper bad L yet. But damn, definitely a pretty cool looking vibe on this dude. I love the like the swirling skulls around his hand. Obviously got that dark magic going down. Right then, let's take a look here. Lady of Irith. So new Sylvan Watcher support champion. I'll say they've got a decent level of support champions right now. And you know, this is going to be another one that they had in the mix. Feel like they need some damage really but anyway uh maybe that's due to come so yeah we've got sylvan watcher let's just have a quick look at this faction because we've already got elva great support legendary oella decent support legendary as well not crazy but decent king galkabar i guess they're classing alil as a big damage dealer and he is in fairness he's just not like top tier who are kind of like you know a bit in betweeny so yeah, it feels like the legendaries are quite heavily weighted towards support at the moment. Anyway, let's have a look. Fae Bolt A1 attacks one enemy, instantly activates one random continuous heal buff on all allies with less than 85% health. That's a pretty cool A1, actually. So if they've all got a heal up, they're all going to take a punch of a heal from an A1. That's very decent. Um... A2, Mistwood Healing, books to a three-turn cooldown, removes all debuffs from one ally, then heals that ally by 40% of their max HP, and you can get a crit heal. So that's a bit like Apothecary's crit heal. It can be a massive heal, that one. Um, but single target heal and cleanse, it's okay. If the target is not fully healed, puts block damage on them for two turns. Interesting. If the target is fully healed, gives them 50% turn meter. Damn, you almost want them to not be fully healed <laughs> and get blocked damage for two turns. There could be some kind of crazy shenanigans going on with that, but uh, quite interesting. Rhythmic Strength then for the A3. Books to a three turn. Big Strength and Buff and Continuous Heal Buff on all allies for two turns. It's pretty decent on a three turn cooldown. Strengthens very underrated as a buff. Yeah, basically just take 25% less damage straight out of any any damage that's coming at you so that's pretty cool obviously as a buff though can be removed all that type of stuff aegis of the forest as a passive then this has got a, a two turn cooldown but it books to a zero places a shield buff equal to 15 percent of this champion's max hp on the ally with the lowest health for two turns at the start of her turn so if you book it down basically every time she gets a turn someone's getting a 15 percent shield based on her HP. That's the important part, it's her HP. So you just pump her HP up and you're going to get massive shields on probably people that are about to die. HP in all battles as an aura. I'd say it's a decent kit. Like, you almost want this to be a team heal for it to be a crazy kit. Decent kit, nothing too 
extraordinary. Certainly for this faction, she's going to go onto that kind of like, onto the, the realm of good support champions. Elva's already great. Gladna's not bad. Um, but in a different start, in fact, she's not that great. Yeah, Elva's certainly very good. Oella's half decent. And this one goes in there as probably a really strong healer as well. Healer stroke support. So let's take a look then at uh, Valkanen. So first thought is there's a lot going on because it's over two pages. So Valkanen, Void Legendary from the Undead Hordes. Okay, obviously it's undead. He's going to be, he's going to turn into Bad L at some point. So let's see what's going on there. Look at this kit. It's massive. Literally like two kits rolled into one. Right. Void Legendary. Is he worthy of the Void Legendary title? So we've got here, attacks one enemy, Dread Scythe. Attacks one enemy, the attack ignores shields, 60% books to 80% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by a turn. It's pretty solid, actually. And then we've got books to 100% chance of applying debuff spread. So it takes two random debuffs from the target and places them on all enemies under hex. Damn. That's pretty nutty for Hydra, honestly. Like, that's a pretty nutty A1. Like, lots going on there for an A1. Hex of Blades then. Books to a three turn. We've got here, attacks all enemies. This attack deals single target damage to each target individually instead of doing AoE damage. That's really important, actually. So the, the reason why that's so good is like Hydra heads, for example, have a load of damage mitigation from AoE hits. Loads of, or oh, quite a few kind of, Top tier champions have passives which stop damage coming from AoE hits, like a, a Duchess, for example. So that could end up being pretty damn sexy. Um, got here as well. Before attacking, books to 100% chance of placing hex on all enemies for two turns. Before attacking, so you get the additional hex damage. Will ignore 20% of each enemy's resistance for each dead ally. So if you've got, you know, three of your team dead, you're going to ignore 60% resist. Okay. Um, damage of this skill increases by 10% for each debuff on each enemy. So I guess if we're talking arena here, you know, we've still got polymorph going down. So getting tons of debuffs out there is quite hard to do, certainly at a high level. If you're talking something like Hydra, then, you know, it's, it's pretty comfortable to get a load of debuffs out. So you could end up having like four or five debuffs out easily. And then you've got like a 50% damage boost from this. Plus the hex. Um, plus it's doing individual target damage. That could end up being nuts for Hydra. Could end up being absolutely nuts. So we've got Death Bargain here. DA3. Books to a three turn cooldown. Targets an ally. If the ally is alive, kills them and unlocks a secret skill. Malice Unleashed. So if the ally's alive, kills them and gets, gets his skill Malice Unleashed. Uh, unleashed. Also places 25% weakened for two turns and true fear on all enemies. These debuffs cannot be resisted or blocked. Then he gets a turn meter filled by 75%. <laughs> okay, so you're basically killing your mate. You're weakening the enemy. You're fearing them in case they do get a turn. So you've got a good chance they don't take a turn. And you get a ton of turn meter. So that you're going to go again with whatever the next skill is. I guess it's Malice Unleashed. Um, if, though, the ally is already dead, heals himself by 50% of the dead ally's max HP. Oh, this is confusing, but actually pretty cool. If all allies are dead, also unlocks Malice Unleashed and puts a shield buff on this champion for two turns. The value of the shield is equal to any surplus heal if he's already got a shield, the value of the shield is increased by the surplus heal. That's a really interesting A3. Like, tons going on, but pretty interesting. Okay, let's see what this Malice Unleashed is. Attacks one enemy. Four attacking steals all the buffs, and it cannot be resisted. I wonder if that's still 50-50 with Stone Steel. I think it probably is. If the target's got um, attack equal or higher than this champion's attack, this attack gains a bonus damage multiplier equal to the target's attack. Not applicable to bosses. So this is an arena ability, basically. If the target's attack is less than his attack, this attack will ignore 50% of the target's defense. 
Now, I mean, it's a single target hit, but that's going to be a smack. Um, it also ignores block damage, unkillable, shield, ally protect. Places block revive on whoever he kills. Damn, that is a crazy good skill. That's a really, really crazy skill. Okay, Phantom Bulwark. So we've got a passive here. The active effect puts a shield buff on this champion each time an ally or enemy champion dies. So anytime anyone dies, he gets a shield. It's equal to 50% of the dead champion's max HP. It cannot be removed and stolen, whatever. If this champion is already under a shield, it just increases by that much. Damn. Uh, doesn't happen with bosses or minions. This is definitely an arena champion here. Or I think it's an arena champion or a hydra champion, honestly. Another part of the passive here. Whenever an enemy hits this champion whilst they're under shield, places a random debuff on the enemy. Fear, true fear, freeze, provoke, petrification, sleep, and stun are placed for one turn. Any other debuffs are placed for two turns. So is it, it must just be a random debuff out of all the debuffs that exist, by the sounds of it. Will ignore 20% of, uh, of the enemy's resistance for each dead ally. Cannot place boss exclusive debuffs like smite and stuff. Okay. And then we got a 30% arena aura. There's a lot going on in this dude's kit. There was an awful lot going on. I'd say he's super cool for Hydra because of his A1 and A2. And then I think he's got some pretty funky live arena, arena mechanics. I don't know if he's a main arena champion so much. Could be. Depends how hard this A2 hits, I guess. But definitely some funky stuff going on. I think we're going to see a ton of playtesting with this dude once he is actually out in the game and people start picking him up. But let me know what you think of the two champions. Um, we've got Valkanen and we've got Lady of Erif. And I guess let me know what you thought of them in Call of the Arbiter. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.